What's going on, people? Wait to get a few people on here. Labor Day 2020. It is a Labor Day. It's funny, you see on social media and everywhere else that it's 100 degrees plus in California, which happens every once in a while. It might be God's special way of showing Gavin Newsom and the idiots there that maybe you shouldn't have shut down the nuclear power plants and the other power plants that worked well. If you're in California, you know that you've got to sort of not use electricity. When you turn the light switch on, it might not work. That's always very interesting to me. Let me put on my seatbelt before people complain. Hold on. Always wear your seatbelt, kids. Always. Anyway. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. A friend of mine, Sean, was trying to fry an egg on the sidewalk. It didn't work, but at 110 degrees, 114 degrees, you think that it might have. So he gave it a shot to see what was what. And it didn't work out, but it was pretty funny watching him try. Wanted to stop by because uh, I am off today. You'll hear me because we did a best of, so you'll hear some interviews that we did recently. But otherwise off. It's 90 here in South Central Texas. It feels like about 105. It feels really hot. But uh, we're at 90, which is uh, interesting. Heading off to get some groceries and do some other errands. I don't get a chance to do an awful lot of that during the week, so that's kind of cool. Wanted to talk to you about journalism. This is sort of the reason for this live. You've got The Atlantic, which is not a journalistic outlet. It's a far left-wing outlet. It's not my opinion. It just is. Everything that they write is to a far left-wing stance politically. And it, they're owned by Steve Jobs' ex-wife, I guess. I don't know if, he's a, if she's his ex-wife or his widow. Either way, she's, she's full of money. And she has given to political action committees... I believe the number I saw was $1.6 million to Joe Biden. I saw a low number of about five dollars or $600,000. But she's trying to get Joe Biden elected. No doubt. She personally has given the max uh, to his campaign, which is, I don't know, $2,400, $2,600. But she, in, as far as political action committees go, you can have a PAC, a PAC, Political Action Committee. And you can donate as much money as you want to them. And she's donated a ton six or seven figures to try to get Joe Biden elected. Now, what do we know about Donald Trump when it comes to the military? We know that there are pieces of video where he talked about how beautiful the people were coming back, those who gave their limbs to to the war effort. They're beautiful people that nobody talks about. This is like in 2007. This wasn't even when he was the president. But when he was running for president in 2006, or 16, I should say, he 100% raised money for veterans. And he talked about fixing the VA. I remember he was raising money at some fundraiser for veterans in 2016. And he said, well, I'll match it. I'll put a million of my dollars on top of that, too. So donating his own money to the tune of millions of dollars to veterans' causes. You can go back and pull the video. He has always spoken highly of veterans. Now, the allegation is that he refused to go to a ceremony in Paris because it was raining a little bit. That's been proven to be false. That's not true. It was a major storm, lots of cloud cover, could not take helicopters up in it. You would have had to go through Paris, the streets of Paris, to go to this thing. So that would have been meant shutting down the streets of Paris. The local police weren't aware of that. The local government wasn't aware of that. The Secret Service said, sir, we can't let you go. Now, that's his story. I wasn't there, but that's what he says. Nobody but nobody disputes that. The other allegation is that he's looking at the graves. He's at a cemetery with John Kelly, his then chief of staff. And he's looking at graves of fallen Marines, those who died fighting the war. Now, the allegation in the Atlantic from anonymous sources, four anonymous sources, is that he called them losers and suckers, those who were dead in the cemetery. Now, how do I know he didn't say that? Well first thing is that it's anonymous sources. I made my living as a journalist for a long time, and I did it very, very well. Yes, you've heard me say it on my show. I've won many awards for journalism. 
I was honored by the United States Congress, the House of Representatives, for, for my reporting the events of 9-11. I was honored by the state of Michigan for my reporting of, of the events of 9-11. I know how to do it without a bias. Now, I give my opinion on my show, obviously, but I always base it on fact. So how do I know that Trump didn't say it? A, the, the sources are all anonymous. I would not let a reporter at my TV station, I used to be a news director, I would not let a reporter at my TV station report something they couldn't source. So four anonymous sources is a problem already. And then you've got uh, Jennifer Griffin from Fox who says she talked to two of her anonymous sources, to two more anonymous sources. Then you've got uh, John, I can't think of his last name right now. The guy who I've actually been on television with, I just can't think of his last name, he used to be at CNN. Uh, John Roberts. He said, I was there. I was reporting on it. And that was not said. I did not hear anybody say anything even close to that. John Kelly has not said it happened or it didn't happen. But here's one that really breaks the left camel back. This one breaks the camel's back on the left. I've had John Bolton on my program. John Bolton, the former uh, ambassador to the, to the United Nations, former national security advisor for President Trump. He cannot stand Trump. This guy wrote an entire book talking about what a piece of crap Donald Trump is. I had him on my show. We argued. We went back and forth. A lot of you really loved that interview. John Bolton said if, he, if Trump would have said that, I would have written an entire chapter of my book about it. Believe you me, if Donald Trump had said what The Atlantic is reporting, John Bolton would be on the highest mountain with a megaphone screaming it. Listen to what he just said. Oh my God, he said losers and suckers. People, listen to me. It never happened. It didn't happen. That's the bottom line. Journalism, let me just explain that before I let you go, because I'm driving down a road about to go get my, my food. Journalism is actually a stress-filled job because you got to get it right. But in this day and age, I guess you don't have to get it right. In this day and age, you can be as wrong as you want, and it's fine. No problem here. But the real basis of journalism is just keeping a journal. You've got a journal. You keep that journal for those who are going to consume your information, whether it be online, in paper, spoken word, or it could be on television. It could be in any, any form. You just keep the journal. What you think doesn't matter. What you think has no basis whatsoever in your reporting. I should not know what you think after you report it. That's simple journalism 101. You want to tell me what you think? Get a talk show. You want to tell me what you think? You know, don't don't have a job where you call yourself a reporter, a journalist, the beat writer. Those jobs have descriptions and they're easily described. You keep a journal, you tell me what you saw, what you smelled, what you felt, what you heard. That's it. You use your senses and report to me, your consumer, what it is you saw, heard, felt, or touched. Period. You're an observer. You are not somebody who takes part. So to call yourself a journalist and have anonymous sources and nothing to back it up, and everybody but everybody who was there has come out and said, he didn't say that. And we have the historical facts about how Donald Trump has treated the military and how he fixed the VA that Obama screwed up. Obama's VA was saying that veterans were getting appointments and seeing doctors, and they weren't. They literally were not. They were dying waiting to see a doctor, and they were fudging the book saying that these people saw doctors. Trump came in, fired six or 700 people that were unfireable. He got rid of them. Updated the technology, and is the VA perfect? Hell no. Is it on the way to getting a whole lot better? Yes. Why would he do that if he hated the military? Why would he have such a high military spending budget if he hated the military or hated the people fighting in the wars? Now, he's not a hawk. He's not a war guy. That's for sure. But he never, ever, I, I will bet my bottom dollar, he never, ever said they're losers and suckers. It just doesn't make sense. Look, you can say a lot of things about Donald Trump. You don't like what he tweets. You don't like what he says. You don't like his attitude. You don't like his hair. You don't like his skin color. Fine. But don't lie about what the man did or didn't say. And there's plenty out there for the left to complain about about what he actually does say, that we know he said. 
why on earth would you make this one up? And if it happened two years ago, maybe this is as good a question as the, as the Bolton question. If it happened two years ago, the hatred that these people have for Donald Trump, why would they hold it? Why would they wait till now? They didn't wait to impeach until now. They didn't wait to say Russia collusion till now. They didn't wait to say Stormy Daniels till now. So why wait for this one till now? It's because it's bogus. And you gotta love that people are saying, well, I can't tell you any journalist who's ever lied. Look up Dan Rather, look up Brian Williams, look up Jason Blair from the New York Times. Look those people up and then tell me again how journalists don't make stuff up sometimes. Now, are, are the majority of journalists bad? Of course not, I think they're good. But those who are working for the left journalistic outlets or alleged journalistic outlets, those who are working for the MSNBCs and and uh, for the CNNs and the CNBCs and the ABC, CBS, NBC, even the Fox News in, in some areas, those who are working for those outlets many times are purposely getting it wrong. And if you listen to just one of Kayleigh McEnany's press briefings, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. The questions are disgusting, they're leading, they're ridiculous, they're biased, they're opinion, and they aren't okay. All right, I got to run. Spread this around to everybody who's confused about what a journalist is supposed to do. Spread this around to everybody who thinks that, well, of course Trump said it. And then they give you 18 different reasons, which all really are reasons that, that simply say, I don't like the guy. If they're telling you their feelings about how they think he said it, about how they don't like the guy, about how his hair makes them feel, whatever, ignore them, blow them off, and realize that they're lying in their asses off. Okay? I gotta run. We'll talk to you in a bit. Spread this around everywhere.